Okay, so as requested, I, I will be presenting or talking about our proposal, IODP proposal 967, uh, entitled Testing the Ontang Javanui Hypothesis. So uh, what is the Ontang Javanui Hypothesis? So first, I'd like to show you a map of the Pacific Ocean. Um, and here you can see there are several bathymetric features known as oceanic plateaus. And in fact, the birth of the Pacific Ocean could have been associated with the formation of these large oceanic plateaus, starting from Shatsky Rise and has rise to the north, Ontong Java, Manihiki Plateau, and Hikurangi Plateaus, and also Mid-Pacific Mountains. Um, the three largest oceanic plateaus are now proposed to be part of a huge or even larger single super plateau known as the Ontong Java Nui. And um, this was proposed by Taylor in 2006 with this configuration here. Oh, the mouse does not. Anyway, the mouse does not. Can you see the mouse? No, it doesn't work. Okay, so anyway, before this hypothesis, um, including Ontong Java, Manihiki, and Hikorangi Plateaus, there was a, um, an older suggestion that uh, Ontong Java and the adjacent basins could be um, one body. Uh, and this was proposed by Larson in 1991. And in this configuration, uh, OJP is different or not part um, I mean, Manihiki and Hikurangi plateaus are not part of the same plateau as the Ontong Java plateau. But the um, question is, is there enough evidence to believe that Ontong Java Nui did exist? So short answer is that maybe we don't have enough yet evidence for this. Because um, as you can see, we don't know much about these three plateaus in the first place. Um, if you look at the sampling made uh, since the last, uh, since 19, maybe early 80s or 70s, um, we haven't had a lot of data, except maybe for the Ontong Java Plateau. But um, even for the Ontong Java Plateau, if, even if we have eight drill holes on Ontong Java Plateau, it's all located in the northern part. And, um, for Hikurangi and Manihiki plateaus, there, uh, for, he, uh, for Manihiki, there's only one site at 317, and two um, and three dredges, uh, dredge cruises, whereas for Hikurangi, there are three dredge cruises. Um, there, there is one cruise whose data has been published for the Antong Java, and there are several cruises that have been done in the last five years but the data is not out yet. So anyway, so based on this data, um, what's interesting is that we don't have many or var variation or much variation in the composition of the cells that we're sampling. For example, for the Ontang Java, uh, from all the eight sites, we only have three types of basalt so far. We call coin beta lighter green, cranky, and singalo. And I'll show you later what they look like in terms of chemistry. Um, another advantage for the Ontong Java is that we have, in the southern margin, we have the Solomon Islands here, uh, where we found um, about 3.5 or at least 3.5 kilometer of Ontong Java cross exposed um, in Malaita. And in terms of geochemistry, the, the finding is that this is like an expanded version of Site 807 in the northern part of the plateau on the drill site. So we have also Singala type and Coimbata type basalts, but much thicker compared to the drill sites. So the implication is that for that much distance, we are seeing the same type of basalts. Why is that? We don't know. Okay, 
um, if we compile all the data from the different plateaus, from the three plateaus, the H data suggests that um, there is indeed an overlap between or among the ages of the three plateaus. And in terms of the hypothesis that they form from one plateau, it seems to be consistent. However, there's a little bit of uh, difference for the Hikurangi plateau because when, uh, as you can see, okay, the symbols are, you can see the symbols there is Mariana is in this part and then on Tom Java are circles and Manhiki plateaus are triangles and Hikurangi plateau data are diamonds. And um, you can see that the Hikurangi plateau data appears to be, to indicate that it's younger than the other two plateaus. And most recently, in just last month, in Goldschmidt, um, Anthony Coppers and his student reanalyzed or redated some of these drill site samples, and their results indicate that Ontang Chava, uh, the, from the drill sites, uh, have ages of 106 to 118 million years, which is quite young or much younger than the Manihiki plateau. Okay, so it just indicates to us that uh, maybe we need more data to really say that they are connected. Um, in terms of chemistry, um, here uh, the symbols again are the same as in the previous slides, and it, these plots are um, eudemium isotope versus lead, and uh, 207, 208 lead versus 206 for lead. Okay, so you can see here that the Ontong Java plateau data is quite clustered very well, um, forming two, class, two compositional types. We call the coin beta, the green symbol, the green color, and singular type lavas. And it's interesting here that Hikurangi plateau basalts or data also plot together with the Ontong Java plateau data. Uh, on the other hand, um, Manihiki plateau data appears to be a little bit different, a little bit off, um, but there's a little bit of overlap with singalotype basalts. And this is a big uh, question or problem um, concerning the connection that's suggested by Taylor. Um, another point I want to, to make is that the composition of these uh, plateau basalts are different from ocean ridge basalts we call Pacific Morb. Um, and this is a suggestion that their origin is different from shallow mantle ocean ridge basalt volcanism. Um, and when you look at the Nauru Basin and East Mariana Basin data, they plot also close to the coin by the type composition of the Ontong Java Plateau. And this is because it's possible, as suggested by Michael recently in Goldschmidt, um, the composition of the Nauru Basin and East Mariana Basin basalts are quite similar to those of the OJP basalts because they could be uh, flows from the main plateau of the Ontong Java. And this is inferred from the volatile content, like CO2, from which you can derive the paleo depth of eruption. And um, in these two places, um, is Mariana and Nara Basin, the paleo depth that they're getting is much shallower than their present location. And that means, and so their, their interpretation is that, when, what you can see in the lower panel is that, um, OJP basalts may have come from these points on the high plateau and flowed over 1,000 kilometers down to these adjacent basins. And that's probably why we're seeing not much variation in the composition. And another point is that they compare the composition of the glasses from 1186 to 1185, and they see almost exact compositions and volatile content, which is quite a coincident, coincidence, but, um, and so they interpret this as a possible part of the same flow 
from one hole to another, and that's about 200 kilometers away. And so their suggestion is that we are seeing very long flows from the plateau to the adjacent basins as well. So in that case, the, the suggestion of Larson may be true that um, the adjacent basins and the OJP plateau itself comprise one great Ontang Java plateau. Okay, so now um, to the bigger picture of Taylor that um, connects also with the Hikorangi and, and um, Manihiki plateaus. Um, what's the implication of this? Um, okay, so if you look at the trace element data of the Ontong Java basalts, um, you can see that the pattern here is quite different from, the, from that of more basalts, which is represented by the dashed line. And this pattern cannot be explained by by affinity with more the same warp source as I've shown you earlier in terms of the isotopic composition. And the other thing is that when you, the, when you model the rare earth element data uh, as presented in this bottom figure, is, uh, it indicates that the melting required to form this composition of basalts is very huge um, from about 0.18 or 18% if the basalts are not corrected for fractionation to about 30% if, it's, if the composition is corrected for fractionation. And so that's a huge amount of mantle required to produce these basalts. And um, a calculation or a, um, a representation, this cartoon is a representation of that. And uh, that amount or the volume of mantle required it's equivalent to a sphere with about 700 kilometer radius for the OJP. And if you add Manihiki and Ikoragi plateaus, that would add up to about 1,000 to a sphere of, seven, of 1,100 kilometer diameter. And so just from this uh, illustration cartoon, it would involve um, parts of the lower mantle to produce these basalts. And you can also see here that um, by itself, Greater Ontong Java uh, has about 60 cubic kilometer, a uh, 60 million cubic kilometer volume, which is huge and requires, um, depending on the duration, it would require about um, 60 cubic kilometer per year if you if the duration is one million year or if it's 10 million year, that's much more than what's produced in Hawaii in the present time. And if it's 2 million years, then it, it's actually much more than the global production from the ocean rich volcanism. Uh, so um, there are models to uh, that are proposed to explain this and that are shown here. And uh, to explain the volume and the large degree of melting, um, it would require a lot of uh, a huge or hot mantle source, which is compatible with in inferring a mantle plume from the lower mantle to produce the Ontong Java Plateau. Um, the problem with this model is that um, you would expect from the high temperature that you will have um, uh, uplift for the Ontong Java plateau, but it's not seen from the data. Um, the other model is the bolide impact, which can get around this subsidence problem, but then you don't see much signature from impact, as uh, we, we have derived from our platinum group element and osmium isotopic profile of the seawater around this time. Um, the other one is visible mantle origin, wherein you have um, some recycled crust in, um, in a background of shallow mantle. But um, as I showed earlier, the isotopic composition of the Antung Java Plateau basalts are not similar to mid-ocean rich basalts. So there's not no single 
model that can explain the occurrence of these plateaus. So, in, in short, um, there seems to have um, indication that from both the age and the uh, uh, overlaps in the composition that these plateaus, Manihiki, Hikurangi, and Otongkiaba plateaus are connected. But there are also additional problems at, besides the very few data that we have so far. Um, if you look at the thicknesses of the, the crust of these three plateaus, you can see that um, Manihiki, OJP, could be, I mean, Manihiki and Hikorangbi can be, can be the same. However, Ontongyaba is much thicker than the, the two plateaus. Um, also, our uh, paleo latitudes differ among these three plateaus, and the majority of Manihiki tholitic close, which I pointed out earlier, have, about, uh, have a bit different composition compared to OJP and HP. So um, in uh, this model by Hafmuth et al., uh, they showed how they can get around with this potential problem um, by proposing that, um, so previously here you can see that the eastern part of the OJP uh, has about the same cross thickness with Manhiki and Hikurangi plateaus. So uh, in their model, they're suggesting that the locus of the connection among the three plateaus is in the eastern salient or eastern margin, as shown in the right panel. Um, however, there's a potential problem still with this model because that means that um, Ontong Java and Manihiki may have separated from east to west. Uh, but um, my colleagues from Chiba University suggest that based on their physical survey or modeling that um, the the rifting in the eastern salient is actually northeast southwest so that's a potential problem with this model and in um, to get around with the paleo latitude differences uh, they're suggesting some rotation among the OJP and Hikurangi plateaus just after the breakup of the Antong Java Nui. Um, as uh, I've already mentioned this, that when you look at the Manihiki plateau data, you see a not so similar composition in, with the Ontong Java plateau. And that suggests to us that they could be coming from a different mental source. However, maybe if you can get around this problem if you, uh, if, uh, you Im imply that this uh, plateau, Ontong Java Nui, may have come from a bilateral, um, bilateral zoned plume head, just like what you see in Hawaii, for example, or in South Pacific Ontong, uh, Ocean Island basalts. But in order to prove this, we need more samples. We have to make sure that we were not biased by fewer samples that we have at the moment. And so that's why. Um, we have this proposal to get more basement samples uh, with a focus on determining the true extent of the Ontong Java or the Ontong Java Nui, um, explain the origin and mechanism or further inquire based on other new methods about the formation and mechanism of their formation and magmatic source and evolution and their environmental impacts. So there's two primary objectives. Um, did Ontong Java Nui really exist um, based on these two proposed configurations? And the second one is, did Ontong Java Plateau flows really flow that far, up to 1,000 kilometers from the plateau to the adjacent basins? To answer that, uh, we're proposing to have trail sites in the eastern salient because that's where the locus of the connection among the three plateaus are suggest is suggested. And um, we would like to obtain 100 meter basement from these three plateaus to look at the chemistry, to look at the ages, to look at the paleo latitudes. Okay? And 
If all goes well, those, all those evidence would match and support the hypothesis. To answer the second question, we're proposing a site to the eastern part of the main plateau, um, drilling into the basement, um, and there's two possibilities. So one is that we will drill into a different composition of basalts there, which is not related to OJP, or we can drill into these exceptionally long lava flows. So do you wonder how, how could such flows flow that long into this basin? Anyone? OK, lava tubes. <laughs> you can see that in Hawaii, and you can see that in Iceland. OK, so it's possible. OK, secondary objectives. Um, as I've indicated earlier, uh, we could um, have new data based on these basement rocks, newly drilled basement rocks, to further investigate their connection with the low, shear, large shear velocity anomalies under the Pacific. And other secondary objective is to investigate the mantle route. Um, these are two images, contrasting images, suggesting that under the OJP you have this route that is one is seismically slow, the other one is seismically fast, which are contrasting. And so in order to investigate this, we would like to measure heat flow from the boreholes that we will be drilling around the OJP. Um, this is important because um, it has something to do with the dynamic evolution of Ontong Java Plateau, especially explaining why there's no subsidence um, that is expected um, from the cooling of an initially hot mantle plume head. And the other secondary objective is to look at the paleoenvironmental impact of the eruption of these um, plateaus. OK, so here um, you can see um, variation. This is around 121.5 to about 113 MA. And you can see there's um, large variation in the carbon-13 um, isotopic composition. Um, the total flux of nanofossils, trace metals, temperature based on carbon-14 and oxygen isotope measurements, um, the osmium isotopic profile, the seawater across this time, um, and also atmospheric CO2. So why is it that these things have a lot of these variations? For example, we see a lot of trace element enrichments around 121.5. So um, this uh, is attributed because this time is Coincident with the eruption of the OJP, um, there is a link between the eruption, massive eruption, and these environmental perturbations. However, it all depends on how well constrained the ages are, both in the sedimentary record as well as in the basalts. So we need to sample basalts as well as a complete sedimentary section to further constrain the ages, if they're really much, if they are coeval, and so forth. And so if we really have the Ontong Java Nui, then eruption during this time, we could have um, a match between the OE1A, or Selle level, and the ages of the basalts. So currently, the new ages are not so compatible with the cause and effect link between the OJP and this OE1A um, perturbation or event. Um, so we need more data in terms of age um, because these dates were taken only from the northern part of the plateau. They haven't reproduced the dates that we got from the southern part of the plateau. So is the southern part of the plateau older so that uh, 
we could actually have volcanism before the oceanic anoxic event 1A? Or is it really young? And can we attribute this environment, environmental perturbations to another event, for example? Maybe Manihiki only? Because uh, so far, Manihiki Plateau seems to be older than the OJP. But there's a problem with the volume. And that's another topic. Uh, you can ask me why. Why, it, why we need to have OJP instead of just Manihiki or Hikurangi Plateau. So this is a summary of what do we need to have or to acquire to test the Ontong Java Nui hypothesis. So we need to obtain more basalt samples that are more fresh um, because dredge, um, but samples from the dredges are not necessarily fresh. They could be suffering from alteration, which could affect the age dates that are acquired from them. So fresh as possible to have better control on the age, and we need, a drilly, we need to drill a hole to have a stratigraphic control, of course. So if we have a lot of different variation in the basalts, we want to know how they are correlated to each other and how they are stratigraphically um, positioned. So um, as I said, improved dating technology can give us high precision age, uh, volcanological study, and payload depth estimation to test uh, the really long flows, um, to chemical fingerprinting to test the connection better, um, paleomagnetic study, because if, if paleomagnetic data suggests that they are formed from different locations, then it does not support the Antong Java Nui hypothesis. And of course, uh, borehole heat flow measurements and a complete section of a sedimentary record of the, of the events before, during, and after the eruption. Thank you.